Good day and welcome back to the 40 OT Podcast with your host, Mr. Thomas Henley, of course. Today we have another episode for you guys. We're going to be talking about autism, men and mental health. And before I introduce my guest, I just want to give a little bit of a backstory. Uh, I currently am an ambassador for a lady called Anna Kennedy. She's an OBE and she does a lot of work. She was, I think she was one of the first people to set up a special needs school in the UK. So very big advocate from, from the gates running. And um, we've been in contact. She's helped me link up with companies like Born Anxious to produce my, my t-shirt line. Really great lady who's doing some really active work within the mainstream media and within the community. She's also produced this this really cool event uh, called Autism's Got Talent, which is kind of like a, the autism version of Britain's Got Talent or America's Got Talent. And they have a lot of different music artists, performers, people who come to these events to share their stories, share their talents and be judged. It's a very, I think it's very different to usual events where it's kind of um, a bit more of like a showcase rather than like a ranking thing where people move up and becomes a winner. But it's a really cool event that I'd recommend anyone check out if you're interested in her work. She's also got some books out and things like that. Very interesting lady. Very great. Very happy to work with her. But one of the aspects that's more akin to the topic of this podcast is she introduced me to this amazing uh, music artist called Kieran Lee, who produces music. He's currently studying at university. And I, I am just absolutely enthralled with the the work that, that Kieran's done, the, the already, the songs that have come out. Uh, he produced an album called uh, Acronyms, and all of his songs are, you know, acronyms. I don't know what the, what, what, what the, how, how I would describe your versatile, <laughs> versatile, <laughs> versatile. Well, when the when the album completely drops, there's there's a lot of music on there that I think nobody would expect. Yeah, but it all really just tells that story start to finish. Well, um, let's introduce our guest, Karen. How are you doing today? Today has been stressful, but I'm excited. I'm excited to to be. To be doing to be doing this and to have even had this opportunity, and when you approached me, I was I was really overwhelmed that you know you've got quite an already big following and you've really made a name for yourself and you uh, before you even you know approached me I was checking out your stuff and just some of the stuff you were talking about that really resonated to me. Uh, on a level that I think so many people like me will will understand. I mean, you touch on some topics that not a lot of people are touching on. So for you to even mm-hmm. be like, I've checked out your some of your work and I want you to come on my podcast, just, I was really overwhelmed. And then when we spoke, I, it was just kind of like almost talking to somebody that was another version of me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You, I think we have a lot of um, similarities. So, yeah. But, yeah, so well, I'm excited. I, I suppose, like, you know, for, for for the purposes of this podcast, you know, we're both autistic. We both um, still, to this day, struggle with um, mental health that life has given us. So it's... I think it's really good. It would be really good to talk to you about, like, I guess, <laughs> mental health in general, but also about um, men as well. Because I know that the, like, the suicide statistics for men are really bad, and there's there's a bit of a sort of there's a varied amount of different social stigmas that kind of apply to men about, you know, not sharing how you feel. Um, having to appear strong and kind of, you know, on top of things. And obviously, we, we as we get into the podcast, we can kind of challenge some of those things. But before we get into, like, talking about the main topic of the podcast, like men and mental health and autism, I just want to know, like, how did you get involved in sort of the music industry? 
Um, and how did you get involved with working with Anna and Born Anxious? Yeah, so, you know, when I was younger, I seen the world completely different to, you know, my peers. Sound has always been something I've been obsessed with and the ways that we can manipulate sound. So from the get-go, I think music was just something that I just took to in in the most beautiful way. I'd, I've never taken to something like I have to music. It, it's something that's very complex, very broad, and has so many other things attached to it that when you start to learn it, it just interests yeah. you and the knowledge behind it just amazes me. So I started college 2016, you know, leaving school was, that was hard, big, massive transition. But mm. in Birmingham, we have um, the CAT team, which is there called Communication and Autism Team. And I've worked with them since I was, you know, very, very little, like I'm talking, just started school and wasn't very verbal, didn't take to people, didn't really show any, you know, care for a lot of things, just mm. emotions and all of that. And so you, were you diagnosed quite, quite young? Yeah, I was diagnosed at the age of three. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's very, very early. <laughs> yeah, it is. So I, I say that, that I was diagnosed quite early, but I was like 10. You know, my mum was really, I, I think a lot of people would be quite annoyed at this, but was really almost not against me having a diagnosis, but, you know, 1999, we didn't have the knowledge that we do now. I think yeah. I think the knowledge out there still now is, is not good enough, to be honest. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm still learning something new about myself every day. But yeah, I was diagnosed really young and my mum um, and the doctors, they, they, they had spoke about whatever it, whatever they were speaking about. They just, it, it was the things that I would do when I was younger. I was, I mean, like the one time I cut off a cat's ear and I'm not a, a malicious or nasty person. I just have no street smarts. I mean, I can't even remember that. So for, for me to hear that from someone that really loves animals more than people really hurts my heart. And there was just yeah. other things that were alarming to mom, like not wanting to be touched, not wanting to be dressed and, you know, being really sensitive to things that are happening around me. And she got some advice and they really encouraged her to get, get this, you know, addressed. And she did. Sure. And, I rate her so much for that. I mean, my, when my mum had me, she was only 19. Wow. So, yeah. So for her to take on a child when she's still practically a child herself, it's, you know, parenting don't come with a manual anyway. So what is it like parenting, you know, a child with yeah. the autism and like... ADHD? It's just like... <laughs> what you know how am I gonna how am I gonna do this and I, I, growing up I really felt misunderstood by by a lot of people even my mom but now I'm older I've really gone through some traumatic stuff that's really just you know changed my whole outlook of everything I mean I was talking to mm. one of my friends yesterday he's going for a really really rough time now and, and I mean, he, last year he was packing his bags off and he went and moved somewhere new and he was starting something exciting for himself. And he was talking yesterday, you know, he's back here right now. He needs his support unit. And it's yeah. those, those kind of things, those traumatic events. I know that for him, he would have taken that a certain way. But for me, if that was me in that situation, I would have talked to that a lot worse than he did. And it's sure. that that helps me get that, you know, kind of view and outlook on things. And yeah, but yeah, so I feel like the, we, could, we can put a lot of pressure on ourselves. Like, way too much. I think <laughs> even, even people like who don't have neurodiversities, you know, mm -hmm. in modern day society, you know, we have the issues with like housing, um, the cost of living crisis, you know, we've got lots of aspects that can make it really hard for 
young people to sort of move out, you know, yeah, sort of I... seek that independence. And especially when you're autistic, you it's kind of like you have lots of other different things to think about and even go as far as mental health, you know. If you are, you know, perhaps if you do perhaps go through like severe periods where you can't function as well as you you could usually do that can make it sort of a a looming worry um over any kind of event that you or change that you tried to make i think for me it's like every day is expect the unexpected because we're going to get mm. we're going to get something a little bit different every day but that routine still going to be there mm. yeah yeah on top of that in answer to your question i was approached by Aaron york uh, he's also an autistic um, producer, songwriter, and oh, he worked cool. with the communication and autism team. And they come out and they re they were recording like a series, uh, done really well on YouTube mm -hmm. actually. And I was a part of that, and we done. He he filmed me, you know, singing, and he said he told me about Anna's work, and he just told me, you know. <laughs> what Anna what Anna does basically and yeah. to begin with I was kind of like this sounds cool he approached me and says we're doing an album and I want to show Anna you and I have no doubt that she will want you to be on this album and it was it was building bridges and yeah but from then just never looked back wow and in fact I find it really interesting like the sort of the crossover between autism and music. So I hear a lot from other people, um, strengths like like pattern seeking being like really, you know, really helping with like creativity. Specifically when you think of like beats and music and lyrics, you know, being able to kind of spot patterns and see where you can feed feed into them or, or like break them up for effect or even going so far as like pitch, like in oh, terms yeah. of like singing, I know that a lot of autistic people, their pitch tends to be like pretty on point. And even if it's not, they can tell like oh, little yeah. deviations. <laughs> I'm very on it when I'm on stage and I'm performing. And if if one of my musicians or one of my instrumentalists messes up, I'm noticing that, and then I'm calling them out about that on stage. That's just that's that whole business, you know, music. It's it's it gets embedded into you, man. And I think music just helps so many autistic people. It for me, it's I don't think that you know, without music, I would be able to express myself like at all. It, it's literally mm. autism that represents my music. Autism is my music, yeah, and that's every you know everything behind it, the the the, the thinking process behind you know like naming songs and and even that pitch thing. I learned a really cool yeah. technique the other week about when we're doing when we're say we're programming a kick drum and we want to get you know a, a certain effect, we can just get a snare, pitch that down. And you wouldn't know that the pictures were different. It would just have that that lovely element underneath, and it's them things that fascinate me. It's, it's so I think sort of like the the little details of yeah, there's so many details creating, like the sum of its whole. Yeah, yeah, there's so many. I mean, studying music, I didn't well, before this call. We were talking about you know before the start of the podcast even, we were talking about, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. what were we talking about, Thomas? We were talking about business. <laughs> and we were talking about, you know, talking, you asked the me aspects what it, of yeah. music creation yeah, just being, but, it's not like you just show up and you sing yeah, and everything's yeah. like perfect. you got to learn like the the editing, yeah, the promotion, the forms. The and marketing, the, the absolute everything, <laughs> the writing, the licensing, the making sure that, you know, your distribution sorted, you know, making sure that if you're marketing it to someone, you know where you're marketing that to. You have to have a whole plan. Yeah, I mean, I've been sitting on top of this album now for almost a year and I'm just so desperate to release it. Mm. But I'm just waiting. 
I know it's going to be in the next couple of months, but I'm just waiting cool. for that moment. I think for me with music, I think everything just has to not always sit right, but flow, you know, the, yeah. everything in music is the flow. Do you know what I mean? I think it's really interesting you talk about that because it's like I had a podcast with a ex-GB Taekwondo athlete now, sort of physio dude, and we were talking about sort of <clears throat> making it in the world as like a in self being self-employed or like in the workplace. Like there's there's loads of aspects where you know we have a lot of strengths, like and but there is always going to be some aspects that we find really hard and taxing. Oh yeah. Once like we have me, a weakness, I think we have mm. to then go out with help for someone to assist, mm. find that strategy of how we're even going to approach that. And I'm so glad you say stuff like that, because I don't think that a lot of people understand that. I've been going through a big ordeal with university, um, mm -hmm. and I'm actually I'm, I'm I'm situated at BCU, but the course itself is situated at my college. No, I've got mm -hmm. you know before you go to uni, and I don't think a lot of autistic individuals that would even want to you know that want to consider uni don't actually know what benefits that they could get from going to university yeah. and and that really aggravates me and it's not like set out in like no, a path that yeah, you can just man. go down yeah nah and when <laughs> you gotta search uh, out and mm -hmm. ask people and, and when get yeah around so everywhere. <laughs> at the start of the year but just before i started uni we you get assessed you know for your needs mm -hmm. and i mean the assessment was so hard for me i can't do talking to people about you know I don't know how to explain it. I can't be speaking to people that I don't really know. Or, you know, when you know something's official, for, for me, when you know that that thing's really important, it puts the pressure on me even more and just makes the whole yeah. thing even more of overwhelming. And I got assessed for my support and I got all of my support put in place. And then at the start of the year, we go to uni it's strike and as you can imagine there's no delivery on lectures it's then half term comes mm. up with until we've got an assignment i didn't know i got stuff like automatic two-week extensions you know because of my fluctuating yeah. um, circumstances college has been a real support unit for me at the same time and i thought that going there as uni would benefit me because I really wanted to go away. I thought I need to find some sort of independence. Sure. But obviously things don't always turn out how I expect. And I went for a, a massive ordeal in the summer and that just put on hold. Mm. Well, actually it wasn't that. It just wasn't being in a good place, you know, yeah. and it not being right to go and take yourself away. You know, when you go through these episodes and then we get a little bit better and then we're advised you know we don't want to push you too far we want you to still be good and to for you to still be able to deliver basically and so i was saying about these extensions they were all in place and my tutors just didn't acknowledge the change in my behavior yeah. in terms of you know my physical appearance they were aware just before breaking up that I was struggling massively with my with my mental health and you know I was absolutely assured that everything was just going to be okay and that the support was going to be there and in place yeah and my my tutors didn't even read any of these you know support statements didn't even tell me about my extensions didn't tell me that my handouts are meant to be given to me so many different things it got to a point where it become very confrontational yeah and they're quite mean and there's been times where you know i'm I, i'm a very respectful person and i've known mm -hmm. these tutors for eight years you know i've, I've been there a long time I've, I've studied a lot 
I love studying. And they know me. They, they know, I see these people as family. And for them to not, you know, you know, if I was, you know, teaching is something that I want to do. And I've, I've, I've done teaching programs and gone and taught music and done some workshops. And mm-hmm. that was great. That's cool. And uh, yeah, but really seeing these people as a family, I still do. I still have a lot of respect for them. I'm just, just hurt because a lot of the stuff with uni has just really impacted on all of my, the business stuff, you know, mm. it's prevented me from marketing. Yeah. It's prevented me to, you know, be able to just dedicate the time that I know that my project is worth. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, if I had a student, you know, that had additional needs and I noticed a change in their behavior, especially if I knew them to begin with, my first thought would be I need to go and find this child support plan, mm. this student support plan, because something's not right here. And we were talking earlier about, you know, relapsing and all of that. And that's just kind of where I'm at with everything right now. University can be really tough. Like, yeah, it really is. I had, I had pretty much like these two, two or three issues like for other year. Like, you, we could talk about the specifics about like how they communicate during like exams and stuff being just completely like uncertain about what they want from me um is i mean i was i was really fortunate that i made a link with one of the student support officers when i was at uni and they were kind of like they're pretty much like the h the hr of the university and they were so they were so supportive and anytime that i had any issues i could kind of go in and chat to this person she's called joanne um, she sadly so she sadly passed away just before I, I I graduated, but she was very sort of integral to keeping me afloat during those times. And I think if I didn't have her, I I don't think I would have been able to yeah sort of cope with university. I really get that. I have those people around me, Lisa and Amanda, welfare yeah. uh, welfare and mental advisors. Um, we have like a student services at the college and they've known me since I was really, really young. I mean, I've done it. I yeah. did a, I did a talk for some, um, SEND students last summer, um, for those that were, you know, looking to join the college and they shown the video of, you know, the cat TV, you know, where mm-hmm. I teamed up with Aaron and Anna. Um, and yeah, they, she saw that video and she's just without, you know, she, cried at seeing this video she's just like wow he's come such a long way and i know that none of that would have it wouldn't have been possible without the support of any of them you know sure. and i think for for we need them kind of units and if we don't have them units things just aren't possible it's 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 interesting because it's like you know we we obviously have such you know, negative life experiences as autistic people just throughout life, whether it's like bullying or isolation or, you know, issues within the workplace, issues with kind of advocating for your needs. There's so many aspects to being autistic that can make it really hard, especially in the adult world, because there is no sort of solid, like, governmental support for autistic people post-18. Yeah. Um, other than perhaps yes. workplace yeah. things. Do you know, for me, I just wake up now and I'm like, I've spent my whole life trying to understand why it is I take to certain things or why it is I react or respond to them sort of things that I'm just sick of my, like, you know, I'm not making excuses for myself. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it is what it is and, and that that's it. And I, I should actually be proud of myself for even acknowledging that you know yeah. and, and i think there's, there is an aspect of like especially with with life you know we have all these social norms that people trying to try to thrust upon us but being autistic we have we have a spiky profile we have things that we're really good at doing and we can do for ages and we can focus on all day to the point where we forget to eat and drink and you know pick up all the, that... the 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 tiny details and 
you know, yeah. recognize patterns and and create things. But there's just such a, a there's a part of life that we may we may fall down on, which you know, for me, that could be things around like executive functioning, things like keeping on top of hygiene or cooking or cleaning or you know that those those things as well as within the workplace things around like organization and um, communications you know there's lots of things that i'm great at that i can do which you know it's you know if i would say it was like the the, the products of what i would want to sell to people you know being like my podcast work and my my blogs and stuff but there's so many aspects to running that kind of thing that I'm not so great. Yeah, I'm really happy because I am in a situation where I found someone who might be able to sort of support me in that side of things. But it's it's taken a while, and it's not something that's like yeah readily when, yeah. pushed by and supported by you know like the systems that we have in place. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. I don't think of anything we, we've got to search it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't think any of the things that I'm doing w would be possible without that support unit. You know, without without people like Anna, without you know the help from Born Anxious, and without them people that continue to inspire and motivate me. It, you know, what I mean, it wouldn't be what what we vision it to be. We really nurture these projects, and we have to mm. try to nurture everything that that is, is sat behind them, them things that are new to us. And yeah, just, just be proud of that in it. I think that's, that's a proud thing. That's a really yeah. It's, it's being, being able to say, Hey, look, you know, I'm amazing at this. Yeah. People should and it just being okay. Of this. Yeah. 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 100%. <laughs> and then all the stuff being like, I don't, I don't find that easy and I need support with that and that being okay as well. It's like, yeah, understanding the two sides of it you know like we see a lot of stuff uh we used to have a lot of stuff which is very negative about autism now we have sort of organizations companies and people kind of they, they kind of go the other way where they say that everything's great about autism whereas like the reality is is that it's a mix of the two and it's you know it's it's just being different and having different needs and having different strengths um, and being okay with that, I guess. Mm -hmm. I guess what I, you know, would really want to to talk about is is sort of like the mental health side of the thing side of things, because I know I know the statistics. Um, the podcast that I did beforehand was around like suicide, suicidality, and autism, which was was quite a heavy one, and we looked at some of like the really difficult statistics even for for young people and adults so what i really want to know is you know what are your experiences with mental health and how do you think autism played into them honestly i didn't have any you know autism on top of adhd to me my whole life that that's felt like a curse honestly yeah and autism you know it, it, mental health it, it's severely impacted just because of how we take to things but you know having these 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 gifts that are that i now see them as you know without autism and the the other problems then I wouldn't see the world the way that I did or do, sorry. So that means I wouldn't be able to make the stuff that I make. But yeah, man, it means Without that kind of mental health aspects of yeah, it. Yeah, it, it's emotions it's, that came from yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It's I, I mean, I'm like an empath, I see myself, you know. I mean, yesterday was quite a hard day for me. Um and I got through got through it up until the night and my my friend was with me in the day and he'd he'd he's been really going through a tough ordeal and I picked up off that emotion so much and mm. uh that but later on on the night when he had left I'd remembered my problem and on top of his problem and I just I just couldn't stop crying I had a, I had a huge meltdown like I say every day is different you know 
I mean, we're still finding out things about ourselves. I, I learn something new, if not every day, every week. And I think, I think you know, no, it's like the, one of the reasons why I've done this today is because I'm really trying to build a platform for myself, but not just be sure. somebody that wants to, you know, release music. Somebody that wants to touch on things, to touch on the important things, and mental health is it's like the hardest thing in it. I, last year in the summer, my my best friend, yeah man, um, took advantage of me, and it really ate me up, man, and. I know I've experienced so much in the past. I mean, you know, we talk about suicide. I've I've been there and I've been influenced, you know, by, by drugs, by by alcohol, by all of them things that, you know, people just deem normal today to the point where I don't mm. drink anymore. I don't do them things because I know the impacts that it has. And autism and addiction is is like it's a, the worst. It's a really big it's thing. So bad to the point where it's kind of like now that I'm really proud of myself that I, I I don't need to have a drop of alcohol to you know let off some steam. I don't need to do that. Mm. You know, I should just be able to do that without that stigma. You know, of you yeah. know it's all right. It's it's okay to not be okay and. So the, well, it, my 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 sort of experiences with mental health. I mean, I I touch on that a lot within sort of the podcast, but it was it was very much created during my time during secondary school. So the experiences of of bullying and isolation and harassment that I that I had it during those times. I developed depression and anxiety, uh, which were quite severe. I had like daily meltdowns and panic attacks for a long time that's me every day i'm exhausted <laughs> it, yeah, was, man. it was it was it was a really tough time and i think you know going past sort of secondary school i kind of carried that that trauma that those experiences with me and i think just because of the the exposure that I had to those negative experiences when I was younger, it kind of affected my brain. Oh like, yeah, and this uh, this is the process of things, and how mm -hmm. long it takes to process information. And I I still see m my specialist every three, if not four weeks, and mm -hmm. that support for me, you know. It helps me to still learn about myself and one of the things i found out was you know how long it actually takes for me to process a piece of information that that could be mm. any time you know it, it it could happen then and affect you still so many years later down on the line because that trauma mm. that trauma doesn't go away that, tra that trauma it gets embedded and yeah. You develop all these yeah, crazy like these defenses coping as well. mechanisms, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. yeah. <laughs> to to do. It. I was talking to sort of a good friend about something similar, where they they experienced something really difficult when they were quite young in the teenagehood, and we were sort of chatting the other night about about that and how you know there's little things that you kind of just pass off as being like a normal part of you or your personality that, you know, really come from that experience of trauma, which, you know, I think especially like with interpersonal relationships, it can, it can make yeah. it really hard to the worst. trust yeah, people to even, and to feel safe and yeah, have all I these coping mechanisms the to moment, try and combat that. I think the moment you find that partner and then it, do it doesn't go the way it goes, mm. Or you think you find that someone and take that trust and you trust them, you know, and you love them. I think when you're hurt by that, it's almost like the end of the world, you know. And oh, yeah. you I, don't. I've been flawed for yeah, like years post, yeah. post 
breakup. <laughs> yeah, it's me right now. I, 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 I wasn't even with the person. It was, yeah, man, things really do affect people with autism just, just to, on, on a scale that is just, it's, mm. it's, it's unimaginable. It really is unimaginable. And, you know, I'm still. I think it's really, you know, interesting that you're talking about like processing things because. I don't think you people know, talk time. about it enough. I don't. And I'm sick For a long of... time. Yeah, it's I'll right. carry on. <laughs> no, it's all right. I was just going to say, I'm just sick and tired of people saying, you know, get over it. Or, yeah. you know, it's been a year. Or it's almost been a year. Mm. Or, you know, th- this happens. And no, because, you know, I've actually just, you know, I have to work for what works for me. And the way that I'm feeling don't work. But I understand that. I'm processing this completely different to other people. Why is that a bad mm. thing? Why do I have to, you know, make that out to you, make that a statement and make that aware that the way I, I'm not making excuses for myself, we spend, you know, most of our lives, our whole lives, in fact, figuring out why it is we respond and act this way. And I'm just sick of people saying that, you know, you know, just it's, it, it's, that's life, mate. You know, because that's what brings back this stigma <laughs> of, you know, men and their mental health and that it, it's not okay to be Get a man and it. not feel good, Grow you know. Some balls. Yeah, you know, like <laughs> like what the like, literally, man, and it's that sort of naive behaviour. It is naive because these people that have that sort of outlook on the world just they're just naive. They're not they they can't they're not open minded, they can't see things for what it actually is, you know. I and I think I think even as far as going into the mainstream media, like if we talk about even the people who are or organizations who are advocating for mental health, it's always like oh yeah, we'll there's have always these positive statements around so, your house, yeah, yeah, and think positively and do yeah, all like these that's, things. That's, you know, like that's that like that's always gonna work. You know, I, yeah. I don't. I've been in my place. I mean, Thomas, I can't explain what my life is like every day at the moment i'm on the go 24 7 i don't know how to shut off i don't sleep i'm not eating really Mm. i'm going through so many different things but i'm i'm still like holding the fact that i should be proud of the things that i've accomplished whilst going through this and ask somebody that is normal yeah to come and just step their feet in my shoes if they can fit for one day because I, you know, I've spent a lot of my life, you know, not feeling proud of accomplishments and not feeling proud of being able to do mm. something, you know, because because people can do that, just just everyone can do that, and it really aggravates me. And this is why your podcast touches me so so much. And you're actually one of my inspirations. I can't lie. It's it, and this is what, yeah, Thank seriously, you. no, and I genuinely mean that. And this is why I really wanted to be on the podcast because you're continuously highlighting things that are important. RSD, mm. it's one, RSD, you know, rejection sensitive. Yeah, rejection sensitive, yeah. Yeah, and I, I was like, why, what is this? You know, when I was younger, I used to come home and I'd research, why do I have like a stabbing pain in my heart? And it would just mm. be like, you're dying or, or, or something, you know, just, you know what Google's like. If you, if, yeah. if you Google, if you Google <laughs> a symptom, that's for, it. It's um... the end of the world. Think the worst <laughs> automatically. <laughs> and my specialist actually said, do you know what RSD is? And I went, and then, you know, having ADHD as well, you know that that RSD is very common mm. in, in individuals with ADHD. And I, I don't know how and to what extent you know about how medication works for RSD. But you, from what I research, you can't be medicated for ADHD and RSD. I did mm. some, yeah, I did some, I should have kept this for this, for this particular thing right now, because this is a conversation that I wanted to have with you. And just, I think the point I'm trying to make is that when you, spoke about that that really connected to me and i i don't think a lot of people are even aware of what rsd is or 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 whether it is a thing you know 
And, you know, we talk about, you know, how how does, you know, autism affect us? Well, it, it affects multiple things because it's not just autism it's then ADHD and you know like autism has its stems ADHD has its stems OCD has its stems and it's it's one big massive tree that just doesn't stop growing yeah you know (laughs) yeah so yeah I'm really I feel really privileged to be able to do this today because uh, I feel a lot of my stuff is not as vocal as it could be and I say that being a singer I mm. want to be somebody that can going back to earlier I said I was really skeptical about the whole autism and doing an album thing and it you know being noticed for my singing just because I'm autistic and then I thought you know we go through something and our outlook on that completely changes and it was that and it's that now and I want to be able to create music that touches on topics that, you know, mean something to people, that that tells a story. I want my platform to be that. I want people to know, you know, hop on my website and know that, you know, I'm, you know, I'm someone that has has gone through this. And if there's anything I can do at all to help anyone, that's 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 something I would do, you know, and that's why you inspire me so much because there's just not enough talking about this. There's so much talking about all of the other stuff and just not enough of this. Hey, up, just popping on to say thank you for listening to this podcast this far. If you could do me a real solid, please make sure to rate the podcast if you're on a podcasting streaming service and do all that like, subscribe, comment stuff on YouTube. Damn, even send a heart in the comments if you don't feel like typing. Make sure to check out my link tree, which is always down below in the description, or head over to my Instagram page at Thomas Henley UK for daily blogs, podcast updates, and weekly lives. This podcast is sponsored by my favorite noise cancelling, noise reducing earbuds that you can adjust the volume on. Really, really great thing. They're called D Buds, and you can find the affiliate link down in the description of this podcast. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the rest of the podcast. That's all from me. It's putting all the all of the issues on the autistic label yeah. rather than the interaction between the autistic person and the society that's mm-hmm. not built for us. Like <laughs> I uh I really feel what you said earlier about sort of growing up hating yourself and hating autism. Because mm-hmm. that's something Not that, to be, yeah. That's something that I experienced a lot when I was younger. I used to talk to my mom, and I was like, "Why do I have to be autistic? Why do I struggle with these things?" You know, I used to get really upset about it, and it was only until my early twenties when I really um, sort of branched out my understanding of autism through listening to other autistic people that I started to. That's like, hey, the actually, magic. You know yeah. What? Yeah, that's yeah. The magic. You know what? There's actually some great things to this, and you know we're yeah. an asset to the world, and one hundred percent, we offer something different. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, when I'm having these huge ass meltdowns, I still, I'm like, mm. why does my brain have to be like this? Why am I built like this? And I really. I'm at a kind of point in my life where it's like, if this is how things affect me now, then what am I going to be when that support unit's gone? Yeah. You know, because yeah. coping, that would just be impossible, wouldn't it? Yeah. It's definitely, it's definitely di- difficult. I mean, I know that you mentioned about sort of seeing like a, a, a specialist or like a, a counselor or something around mental health but in terms of like you know the the diagnoses and things that that you experience what are those mental health things i imagine that it's around like anxiety depression things like that yeah yeah of course and and you know the stuff that comes with that and how we manage that you know um i'm not afraid to admit that i have scars on every section of my body 
because yeah. self harm so like was self-harming aspects. yeah self harm was is sometimes how I manage them feelings and you know it's overdosing and then you know it, it's drinking and I don't drink now I I, I couldn't um, I don't I don't need to because I'm too much of a mess um, I have to really prep for things. I have to really mm. prep and just be able to take that time. Um, so, so right now I, I'm kind of at a point where I, I just, I, I feel like I don't want to live. I do. I feel like mm. that. I feel like that every day. And that's just because of, you know, the recent hurt and all of that. But it's the other things that really keeps me going it's the people like you and the, the people that are autistic and deal with mental health that are able to say it's all right it's okay not to be okay you know look it it, it really like this is what i mean i'm a really emotional person but yeah mental health is, has affected me in more ways than one earlier i mentioned that i was taken advantage of by one of my friends um and they left, they left without no explanation. And, you know, I just had to be left and deal with that sort of thing. And yeah, in the summer, I just became so shut off from everything. Hmm. And most I think really- there's, a, there's a term for that. Exp- I think it's because it's so, it happens to, to, to a lot of people. There's this uh, concept called mate crime. Whereas where somebody deliberately prevents someone who's autistic or is disabled to take advantage of them. Oh yeah, when, of like yeah, when you're pretending <laughs> to be friends to you know, I don't get think them to I don't use think them the for like money was, or... Yeah, yeah. I think I don't think the friendship was fake. I just think there was an opportunity behind it. You know? Hmm. And th- that then led on to other things. Most recently, um, I've been in with an eating disorder, which I didn't ever, I never thought would ever be a problem in my life, to be honest. And, I mean, days I wake up and I think, yo, you're so fat. And I know I'm not. Because, you know, in a year I've lost like four stone. It's like, <laughs> these are how these things affect us, you know. Yeah. But I still feel it's like the self I'm image, doing what self I'm esteem. Doing. Yeah, and this is why I thought I'm going to give you everything today. And I thought that I'm really going to take this opportunity to to touch, to talk, to you know, be an advocate because if if, if other people can do it, and I feel like I've been for a lot, then I want to be able to shed light on people i mean that's what i live for you know i don't i don't live for me i live for people and i think if i didn't so, have so my mom, greater yeah meaning. yeah i mean if i didn't have my mom i don't think i'd be here full stop to be honest but yeah you know you know kelly born anxious her little one yeah oscar he's like the most adorable soul on this planet and it's for kids like him that I live for mm. the people that and you know individuals that really struggle but don't even aren't even aware of how great they are it's that man it's it, it's those kind of things but yeah life has been the hardest it's ever been at the moment on top of uni on top of writing an album and trying to release it and you know everything else that comes attached with that but i think for anyone that feels like me in this particular moment needs to just be proud you know that they even done that to begin with that they were even able to do that because it's like any any achievement that you make any achievement that you do it's yeah it's you know I think you could take a lot of pride in in doing that, especially when you, you know, just by nature of your experiences in your brain, it's so much harder for you that, you know, although it's not something that everybody will recognize, it's something that I think everyone should recognize in themselves about, 
Because you know, I don't think it's... people realise how much it takes for us to recognise that, you know. And it's just like, <laughs> yeah, this is why I love this podcast. <laughs> well, um, there, there is like an aspect of being open specifically about mental health or, or even autism for a fact around um, being a man. Um, and I, I know that it's not, mental health isn't something that's, you know, but I think more women on average experience mental health difficulties than men, but I think there's a lot of I don't believe that, you know. To... I really just I don't believe that that I don't believe that that women you know deal with mental health more than men. Because there's not really a stigma behind, you know, women and mental health, or at least not to my knowledge. And mm -hmm. they don't, you know, you know, I'm I'm not going to be stereotyping or anything, but yeah, no, I just I don't I don't see how that could be the case because there are mm. so many men that still won't today that you know we talk about people being naive and just underreported. Yeah, yeah, it's one hundred percent underreported, and people aren't talking about it because their image is more important than what's going on inside. Mm. You know what I mean? And so, yeah, I don't believe that for for a minute. That, that I, don't, I don't think there should but be the, any... I, think, I, think I don't very... think there should be any comparison, to be honest, but I, 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 do, I do think that people need to start being more alert and being more aware about the fact that, you know, at least we're, we're in the 21st century, you know, why is there still a mm. stigma between men and mental health? It's just, it's just, it doesn't fit, you know. Why do you think that stigma is? Do you think it's... It, I, th I think we are still, in, you know, this, this, this wall is, con it's, it's, it's evolving into, into things that nobody really thought, but them traditional you know, some of them traditional opinions and them views are still around. And I mean, I think it's, I don't want to be cool to say it's a specific generation, but I do think that, you know, I do think that that's, I think, I think, you know, people that, you know, have had more experience that think men should be manly. And, you know, I think there's just so much of that naivety around you know hmm. and I, I think definitely like you know the, the there are a lot of core sort of values that we talk about with with men that i you know empathize with a lot and i think could be useful to a lot of men but i do think that there is a that i've you know for i've, I've been kind of thinking about it a, a lot recently and there's there's two sort of aspects to to sort of my experiences being being a man and having mental health one is you get these um overly like extroverted you know very insecure men who feel like um any any sign of weakness or any sign of emotion or anything like that that kind of toxic masculinity kind of thing some men can be like that and i have had a lot of people sort of throughout my life who have had that mentality and kind of made fun of me for, you know, having mental illness and not being able to get over it or taking antidepressants or, you know, perhaps not being as confident or uh, strong in, in their oh, eyes yeah. as they see it, or, or even just making fun of me for, for sharing things and being vulnerable. Oh yeah. Well, but there's, I mean... there's another aspect of it as well that people, um, and this goes for both men and women, people kind of assume that because of the way that you look, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm six three and, you know, I'm fairly big and it's, um, people kind of overlook it when I, when I tell them that I'm struggling because they see me oh, as yeah, in my physicality yeah. and I just, and I it don't happens think to everybody, it... not, not even yeah. men and women. Yeah. You know, it does. Or, or anything between. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I know that there are some other life experiences that I think a majority of men might experience that that 
that perhaps women won't experience as much, which could be things like conflicts, like, um, you know, you're more likely to be victim of a, a crime if you're a man. Um, you're also more likely to go to war <laughs> and experience like the front lines and, you know, come yeah. back with a lot of see that traditional like yeah this is what i mean about we talk earlier about you know traditional you know like it's uh, i think some women uh, you know women today would be annoyed if they didn't have the opportunity to fight for their country and then we come back Mm. to these you know traditional it's it's men on the front line you know like men should be big brave and no no just no because it's all right not to be all right and that is literally it in it i just can't mm. i don't think there's any other explanation it's just okay not to be okay it's, it's all right to say i do struggle you know it's okay to say i need a bit of support yeah. and i think i mean even for me i mean sometimes i i, I mean i struggle to ask for help not because I can't ask them but because sometimes I always just don't want that help. I want to be able to manage it. I want to be able to cope, you know, mm. but I know how you feel. Yeah. I think there's, there's another aspect of, <clears throat> you know, modern day living that I think is quite hard to overcome. It's kind of a bit, bit of a stigma is that we, we very much place like this, idea that you know men are not as emotional as women and that they they don't feel I, things yeah, as deeply I can, or can't. I can vouch and fully say that I guarantee you I'm emotional more than <laughs> any woman on this planet and I think anybody that's listening <laughs> that knows me will also agree I mean I can't I can't already count how many times I've cried since yesterday you know, I'm an emotional person I mean what is it yeah with saying you're not allowed to to show emotion you're a man as far as i'm aware a man means that you are born with these parts i still have these parts you know i'm still a man Mm. it's okay not to be okay and yeah man or identify yeah or identify you know yeah literally that and it's like i just think people really need to just I'm so positive. I try to be positive and I try to be hopeful for the the future and for people that are a lot more vulnerable. You I have just, to be. For, you have to be. mental health, don't it, you? You have to like be positive. You, yeah, yeah, but I don't, I, I, I'm always just like, at, at times I'm like, this is just impossible. This is not going to change. And, and, it's that where there needs to be more support available to people. I mean, waiting lists are so long. People are dying. Yeah. Uh, it's not good. And it, it's, so it, we have very high rates of mental health within the autistic community, and we don't have a lot of support for it. Nope. And really, is it quite sad? often? Even if you do get support. It's it tends not to be very effective. No, and you tend not to at be, all. You, you almost know, have kind situations of with the rebelled. mental health systems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that um, that aspect of you know men being emotional just being absolute it's absolutely ridiculous because being emotional isn't a masculine or feminine trait. It's it's not a human no. trait. Exactly. That. You know. Yeah, like we wouldn't do it if if you know we wasn't made to do them things. Like we w- we wouldn't we wouldn't show these emotions. It really angers it's me. Like, that it's we it's have crazy to sit thinking here and, about yeah, like we have to men angers. and their kids, and like do they not feel mm-hmm. emotion towards their kids? And like <laughs> you know, like, you know, love yeah. their partners. It's yeah, it's so you know, I've I've been around tutors that are males that I've broke down and cried in front of because I've been really upset by something that said and they've just not gave a care in the world and 
it's that that just you I, to to even think that we are having this conversation annoys me. Doesn't annoy me because mm. it's a conversation that should be having. It's just a com. Do you know? It's it's it shouldn't even be a topic. the reason for why you know, we're having. It to shouldn't talk even about be a topic. Yeah. I mean, the world's evolving, man, and this just yeah. <laughs> it really does. It really, it really annoys me because I, I say I need to recognise when I've made an achievement and be proud of that, and to. Mm even be dealing with mental health you know that's a, that, that's that's an achievement i should be you know mocked because mm -hmm. i'm a male that is going through a, a, a hard time you know mm -hmm. i just you don't sit right don't sit right i think i mean you know that the, there are aspects to, to to masculinity that i i find you know, applied to me, and I think everyone has their own sort of definitions about what that means. But I, I do think that you know, for a lot of for a lot of men, we do give ourselves a hard time for having these emotions rather than accepting them. And I don't think that ignoring them and knowing that they're there, but ignoring them and pushing them to the side and developing mechanisms to get around it and not talking about it and not being open and, and communicating about it. I don't see that as like a, a sign of strength or a sign of masculinity because it's, it's running away from something. If you're struggling with mental health, if you're struggling with depression, saying that you're depressed and that you have these experiences and have these thoughts and emotions, I think it takes much more courage to, to talk about them courage. openly. 100 percent pushing them to the side there's not enough praise for being like you know i'm very i'm such an open person if i think something mm. i say it a lot of the time without thinking <laughs> but yeah man we really just that need to yeah things. that's the adhd <laughs> side of things mentally <laughs> but <laughs> it's just like be yeah literally what you said i couldn't say I couldn't say it better. It's just just acknowledging that that took strength to say, acknowledging that that hurt mm. to say, but then then realizing, you know, that it's again okay just to not be alright. There there is an aspect of mental health which I think is very, very underrepresented, underrepresented, which is things about your about your body body image and self esteem. Like we're we're living in a time where there's a lot of standards out there, a lot of you know, we, we talk a lot about how social media can really warp the perceptions of women, but I think it's also for men as well. I, I grew up hating my body. Instagram people out you know, out yeah. in the world taking steroids and mm -hmm. saying that they can just achieve this through hard work and that you're weak and that you can't do all of this and you know, if you're if you don't have a particular body type, then yeah. you're not um, re a real man, or you're not attractive. You know, I think everyone up. experiences that, that yeah. body image issue these days. One hundred percent. I was growing up, and I, 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 you know, I didn't feel like I found my style until a certain age, and I'd see people that were wearing this particular thing, and I'd be like, I always had this like vision of I want to be that person, and now I just. I just I don't want to be that person mm -hmm. you know my outfits speak for themselves sort of things and it's them things that we we learn you know that how do I how do I how do I reword that like you kind of you, you look at people and you want to like emulate yeah, them yeah like you wanna, I think you want to get how that where they are yeah but to the point where it's it's not like that anymore because the creative person inside me it's like mm -hmm. I really don't know how to touch on that, or, or he, or how to even, you know, explain what it is I'm trying to say. So, like something around like individuality, like mm, yeah, and self-expression, not feeling, you know, you know, not feeling comfortable in, you know, your body image. I mean, like I, I you know, I said I'm, I'm struggling a lot with eating, and you know. For me, mm -hmm. if I eat something, 
I'm trying not to exercise straight away and stuff like that because, you know, that's the thingy of like, if you do that, you're going to become this or you're going to look a certain way. And in terms of like appearance, you see how it swaps. You see how that when I was younger, it used to be like, I wish I was, you know, I wish I could express myself through my fashion this way, like that person is. Where now yeah. it's like kind of just swapped. And it's kind of like, mm-hmm. you know, about what, what I just said in regards to the, I think it was, was it, was it the eating? Yeah. Yeah. I am. Um, um, throughout my life, I've always had issues with my own body image, self esteem. I, I, I used to try and, the reason why I kind of was so adamant on getting a certain body type and getting like a level of leanness and dropping my weight down was because, I really struggled with like the fact that I I wasn't very good at talking to girls and that I couldn't, you know, I really wanted a relationship and I was like, oh, well, well, people don't find me attractive and I am just so socially awkward and I can't speak to people. So what do I do? Well, you know, I try and fix external things. I try and, you know, (laughs) I try and work on getting lean and getting strong and, you know, and I, I think that that for me was a big ignition for my own sort of eating disorder habits. It was also, I think, it wasn't necessarily about my body image as well. It was more like, it was like another way of sort yeah, of harming with, myself. Something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, like that. that yeah, 100%. That as, I was bulimic, so it was kind of, you know, there's that purging aspect to it, which is, it's it's somewhat dramatic just by its nature and i i kind of felt like i deserved it at that time that i i wasn't good as you know i didn't deserve to have that that meal or that food or that those sweets so i kind of punished myself yeah we do by not eating and yeah i don't think i've we're at completely two different. I feel like I'm. I've only just started to acknowledge that it's a problem, and I think for anyone that struggles or has struggled with an eating disorder, I don't know how to say this. There's only so much we're ready to open up about, you know, at a time, and as sure. so, it's kind of nice to hear your outlook. And how it affected you, because mm. I'm not that. I'm okay to say, look, I've got an issue with eating, but there's there's a lot no, more, you know. It yeah, comes I, with time, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does, and I really love it. Not I don't love hearing you say this, but I like no, to I hear it. Yeah, I don't love hearing you say this. <laughs> I really like. I love yeah, talking uh, about all these horrible things. Oh yeah, I'm so I glad that you've had. <laughs> yeah, I just it's it's nice to I think for anyone that's you know struggled with eating and they hear about it from someone else, it's easier to talk about. It's easier to be like, okay, there's a problem, but there's only so much I want to address. Like, I'm not I'm not ready to get help. Sure. For my sure. eating disorder and stuff. No, 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 no it's, pressure. Yeah, no, you know, that. it's 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 them sort of things, and so I really like hearing that you've. It's inspiring, man. It really is inspiring, and I yeah, think you, as as well, we we do have a tendency, like as as men, to to glorify unha- unhealthy states, like you know, some of the the top like bodybuilding creators. They're like, you know, obviously great great physique lots of muscle but you know they're chronically underweight they're chronically Mm. like and and the reason why people go to follow them is because they are like that we have that aspect of big orexia and body dysmorphia kind of going around where men don't feel manly enough because they don't look as muscular as they want to Mm and they look at themselves in the mirror and they're like oh how tiny am i am i and i think that that, that's that's another aspect Mm. of it and i think a lot of men you know, they feel they feel a lot of I guess they 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 feel weak from yeah. not looking a certain way. 
and we we tend to glorify those people who use things like steroids and yeah yeah cut and their it, weight down and so there's that aspect well, of it's things. just normalizing things that just should have been normalized man and i think i just i see it in so many areas and not just in this and it, i just hate that man that 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 things are often this way because there's a lack of support in it and not enough people talking about the stuff that people should be talking about and highlighting. Yeah. And I, I, I think, think there is the big stigma around eating disorders and men just in general. Yeah, like 100%, most of the 100%. representation is, is focused towards women. Not, not enough towards men, even, even though, you know, it's, it's clear that we do experience it. Yeah, exactly. And I'd probably even say that there's more stigma around that eating disorder sort of space than with mental health. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of the manly men online might go, oh, just bloody get some food in here and yeah. eat right and do all uh, these yeah, stuff. Yeah, and yeah. Stop eating loads of crap on the night. Yeah. Like, <laughs> do you know, there is one well, guy that's easy that for I you like. to say because you don't have an eating disorder. <laughs> there is one guy I like. Um, he's a TikToker. He's the Irish guy. And he oh, yeah. doesn't care for his appearance. He doesn't whack off his top and go, yo, look at his abs. He's got his top on and he's not talking about, you know, all of the negatives. And he's talking about, you know, mm. it, it, you know, this is how much you actually need to eat if you want to gain even a pound of fat. You know, like, don't be beating yourself up over. And it, it's them kind of people that I think we need more of. The people that aren't just, you know, do you know what I mean? But I have seen since, mm. I really wish I had the, the guy's name. What's the guy's name? I'll send him to you, but he's an Irish guy and he does, he does like his workouts, but he doesn't record like all of that stuff. It's not just that stuff. But you see like there's mm. so many people that are just normalizing that, yo, if you want to get this way, like with training, you don't, you can't eat that. You can't, you can't drink that. You can't, you know, you have to get this much sleep. That really feeds into it as well. Yeah. When you're going yeah. For an eating disorder. Like, yeah. these are bad foods. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. These are bad foods. Eat these it's once. Like, you'll be you know, for life I, and I you'll already get fat know. And... <laughs> like, you're telling someone, like, I don't know the calories to, like, almost every single thing I eat. Like, you know. And I think, yeah, I think that, that online stuff just really doesn't help either. So it's nice mm. that there are, there are there are things like this, like podcasts like this online that are are, are positive in in you know making people aware. I think it's it's interesting because with, with any disorder, any condition, any neurodiversity, people already have kind of assumptions about what you'll be like and who you'll be, and like. I, I the the thing is is that I've I've gone through a lot of this stuff and I still struggle with a lot of things and I have my family supporting me with certain things but at the same time I am doing my podcast I am doing my online stuff I am making a business I do go to the gym I used to be a combat athlete you know I used to fight people in a full contact sport you know it's not it's just because I'm open about how I am and what, what struggles that I've had, it doesn't automatically remove me from being yeah, able to be yeah. a strong person and a successful person. It's just exactly. that stuff and that stuff. It's not this yeah, it's that whole stuff. categorization of who I am as a person. It's those experiences that enhance our ability and, you know, the ability to be more powerful. And so I think... Yeah, we just need to recognize this stuff more, way more than it is. And that's what yeah. I want my music to be about, you know. And I want what I do. I, want, I don't want my, you know, my image to be. I'm just, you know, there's so many people that are using their platforms for just the wrong things. And it plays a part in how we're shaping the society we live in and the pressure and the strains that we're putting mm. on everyone. 
things are already negative enough, you know? Like, why do we have to make them even more negative? I'm saying this like a promise that I'm not going to, like, put songs on an album that are going to make you cry. But I mean it in a positive way, you know? No, it's it's communicating what words can't yeah. do, mm-hmm. you know, singing and creating art. It's, I think for, for me, you know, when you were talking earlier about sort of how music's been sort of a really big anchor for you, it's, it's the same with me. It's like, I always used to have my headphones on or my earbuds in listening to like metal or emo rap or <laughs> yeah. at the moment like dark trap or like it's it's a way for me to kind of go into my own world and escape I, I guess it it helps when you don't feel like people understand you that you can kind of go to these places that express these emotions that you're feeling and i you don't know, understand who me. you can empathize with exactly I, look i'll see it as i don't really understand me so mm-hmm. how can i expect someone understand to to understand me but music really sure. understands me music helps me to convey everything that i feel everything that i've experienced and yeah it really just enhances that, that power just to want to keep doing it even though things are hard I think that that's 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 a key point, isn't it? You know, it's um, you can still you can still do things and be a certain a certain way, but also behind closed have things doors, that are yeah. latched onto your life and things that are hard, and it doesn't take away from any achievements that you make. In fact, it makes it probably a lot more inspiring, you know. Or you know, you should it should be something that we look up to as you know this is this is great and you know you you struggle with all this these mental health issues you struggle with these other things in life but you're still going and you're still creating things and you're still you know on the track and i think one of the ways that a lot of people fall down nowadays is that we only see everybody on like on the podium you only see any, everybody in the highlights, the things yeah. that they've done. Oh, there's yeah. so many people in the world and you're filled with all of these amazing moments, experiences, achievements from every single different angle. And it can kind of feel very demoralizing, especially when you're not at that point and that you're still in the works. It's like I said on my podcast yeah. with Nathan Hall, it's, you know, there's millions of of Amazing people still in the work, still making their yeah. way up, and, and still, it's that yeah. everyday, that everyday sort of experience. I was gonna say everyday, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but <laughs> every day well, I can't. Um, I could not have of... said what you just said, bear. Because <laughs> that's exactly how it is. You know, I, I say it as you know, say um, I, you know, earlier I said to you, I like to be a perfectionist, but look, nothing's ever mm-hmm. going to be perfect. And every day I'm honing my craft and I'm developing my craft because. That's what we're doing every day. People are, are, are taking to mm-hmm. things differently and we're, we're experiencing different things and learning different things. So I think, yeah. And life isn't a movie. Life mm-hmm. isn't this this string together. Yeah, of, it's not. You know, a narrative that's short and consumable in an hour and a half. Yeah, It's life. It's re- realistic and not everything's wonderful or horrible moment. It's usually lots of different shades of... Blue and green. You know, grey across the year. Uh, yeah. yeah, see, I'm going to say and that can be really hard, to, hard yeah. to keep in mind, especially if you're not at a place that you want to be. Yeah, 100%. Well, um, I know we talked about a lot of different things. We but, have, do um, you know what? <laughs> we have, we have. I do want to ask about, sort of, I do want to ask about barriers for autistic men seeking mental health support and this could be just for anyone in general like just one thing that i would pitch pitch in at the start would be things around uh relationships in terms of abuse i know that domestic abuse is very underreported from men's side of things it's something that i've experienced a lot 
I've been in some very tough situations with some very controlling, manipulative people. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the time when I when I tried to seek some support or seek some understanding from the people around me, it wasn't something that was highlighted as an issue for me because of the way that I am. And I, I've been, it's been emotional and and it's also been physical at times in certain relationships. And I've always, you know, whenever I've expressed, you know, the concerns about this to people around me, not everybody, but a lot of people, um, they very much underplay just how much that can impact you as a person when you experience those things. And so accessing like domestic, domestic abuse support and, Things like that, I think, is a really big issue for 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 a lot of autistic men. I think I think it's just a support. I really, it is, it is. It, it's this. You don't see it in the media. You don't see it at doctors when you see brochures about, you know, domestic, mm. you know, with women and holding their phones. Are you going through some, are you going through domestic violence? Yeah. There's no, well, it's, there's just, there are so many barriers. There ain't enough of that. There ain't, we ain't seeing it. So, yeah. It's you know for some time it's okay to talk and say things, but I think that mm. we're just really at a time in life right now where the, the, the most important thing we should be doing is acting on these things, and and yeah making changes making changes yeah and and taking these 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 things to to people where like I don't know how I could you know. I don't know how to put this. There are just a lot of barriers, uh, barriers, barriers, like you know. There are a lot of barriers to men's mental health. You don't see it, like I said, on posters, on flyers, and doctors, or or on TV ads or on bus ads. You don't see it. Mm-hmm. It's it. It's not normalised, you know. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to put that word on it. Because of how many times we've used that word in in context throughout sure. this podcast, but that should be normalised, you know. Like it happens, men do go through mental health. Like, why can't help be as accessible as it can for others? And I don't want to do this. Ah, oh, why does I don't want to be stereotypical and be like, you know, or stereotype even and be like, ah, oh, we should have this support or we should have this support, but why shouldn't we all be getting the same support the same you know the same help awareness work yeah the same awareness work like i really just hate that there has to be these sorts of conversations in life at all about there not being enough support accessible for men and their mental health you know i i've worked with you know the, the crisis team after you know have to, trying to overdose and trying to you know commit suicide and they've stayed with you for what a certain amount of time but then i really do think there's a lot of people that are doing their jobs that don't care for their jobs if that makes sense you know a lot of professionals and people that that could be making this change or, or you know well a lot more than say you know non-medical professionals they 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 have that you know that knowledge to say look this is where we need to be making change and there isn't because i think everybody's just at a a time of the life now where it's just like i'm just trying to keep my job and get money get a a stable income and i I honestly don't think until i think there's a lack of accountability yeah like who who makes these who's responsible who's responsible for making these stupid decisions yeah I shouldn't need to like have to like try and stick out of a crowd just to try and get some help. Do you know what I mean? Or I shouldn't mm. have to put myself out on the line just because I'm a, I'm a male who's in need of help or who's in need of support because 
I don't, I don't care if it what you are. I just acknowledge that things aren't good for it now, and then that this person mm-hmm. needs some support, and it should just be as simple as that. I shouldn't, you know, here. It's really just how I feel about it, honestly. I don't know how else I could express it. Just peeves me off. You know, I've tried so hard not to swear for you throughout this whole podcast, by the way. <laughs> I really have so hard. It's all right, man. <laughs> I think, you know, just in general, support for autistic people needs to be improved in terms of, you know, why don't we have any autism mentor specialists? It's something that we had before. Why is that being cut when there is it's a what massive it's all need down for to, it. isn't it? Money. It's what it all boils down to is money, and that, that pees me off too because there's so much money just going about the place that are being put into things that we probably aren't even aware of. And, and I, 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 sadly, we live in a country where the support unit is crap. It's we don't. There's not a good support unit for for most people, let alone those that suffer from mental health and, and and have a diagnosis of some form which you know prevents mm-hmm. or, or or makes things that harder for them and it's just it's it's shameful you know it's really shameful that we, we, we are living still in a world where we have to try and make some like try and validate ourselves or our, our opinion and our outlook on things like I, I don't do that this is why now i'm like very if i've got something to say i'll say it and if mm. something affects me then i need to not be annoyed at myself because it's affected me but be like you know it's not my fault that this is why it gets to me i'm just that's how i'm wired up sort of thing like and mm. there shouldn't be no shame in that and and that goes for men and the mental health and I think I just I think people need to just start talking more and that's exactly why I've done this today. I want I I, I, I yeah, appreciate. No, I pre- appreciate you even having me on here. You know, like I don't want my music to just be or, or have these opportunities just because I'm a musician that, that, that that's autistic and likes to sing. I want to be able mm. to be like. I really Eliminate am just genuinely, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm really just genuinely inspired by stories like yours and stories like Kelly Sonaska. Like I'm inspired by them stories and the the just the love from that and the the beautifulness in that stuff and and how that can. I mean, for the first time when I seen you post about Iris Day, I'm like, yo, I'm so glad that I am not the only one that thinks this isn't like spoken about enough. And for, yeah, I think it was oh, we experience so much rejection in life. Yeah, we? So it's, and, and you would think that, from all sides. Well, I didn't know that, <laughs> that that was common in ADHD. I didn't know that 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 existed. And now i do bear in mind i've it's not something i've just been dealing with now i've just i've been dealing it with my whole life it's just that now i've been made aware where really i should have known about that a lot earlier than i did but that's because people aren't touching on the topics that that do have positive impacts Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. and affect people in different in different ways like you know, we we take the positives from the negatives, and sometimes that's just really hard to do. It's just really hard to yeah. do, but but we try. Well, um, I know we've 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 talked about a lot of different things, and you know, I would really like to take this opportunity for you to share some of your work, share some of your music, because I. For me, there was a particular song which, you was know, really NYN? sort of, yeah, it was NYN. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was NYN. Which, which touched touched me very, very deeply. And I, I think I, I was like, you know, I was talking to my family and I was like, oh my God, this, this, have you heard this guy? And I was like, I played the song and they're like, oh, they're really, they're really good. Like, oh my, very, like so much emotion and like individuality in their voice and i was like well guess what i'm gonna have them on the podcast at some point oh my god they're autistic they 
they did yeah. all this stuff and and it did it i like i played it you know i have it a part of my playlists and i i listen oh, to it. And it it very much it touches me deeply and you know i would really like to if yeah, you're happy wanna... with it to add that to the the, yeah. the song of the day playlist that i have 100 percent. it's it's on spotify as well so it just yeah why not so add that to the playlist which is always down in the description if you want to find it you might have to scroll right down to the bottom but you'll be able to find that playlist if you want to check it out kieran i'm just wondering like what was the i don't know if you want to speak on it but what was kind of like the ignition or the 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 meaning behind the nyn song if you're happy with talking about it <laughs> oh yeah of course it is actually about being autistic funnily enough and mm-hmm. relationships and you know taken to things in a way that that people around me don't and specifically like well i won't put specifics on it but you know like for any autistic individual that's even you know had the success success of a relationship and i don't know what it, it's hard for for the person with or without autism and it was kind of like me trying to make an excuse like so one of the lyrics are now i know you mean how it seems to me or now I, now i know you mean how it seemed to me and that was me saying like um well i'm forgetting my own lyrics so it goes um you pro- so it goes you probably you probably didn't you probably didn't mean how it seemed to me and then it goes yeah. then then further on it goes now i know you you know it meant what it seemed to me and it's yeah. just it's just you know myn is about you know um being autistic and struggling with relationships and you know knowing that certain words are only said out of anger and not because of their men and then you know, just the way we interpret information and relationships mm-hmm. and then, you know, it being actually maybe it is what I meant, but you're my support unit yeah. and I need you now. Mm-hmm. And that's what it's about. And all of the... I definitely felt that from listening, listening yeah, to Yeah, that, that was the really one of... Uh, I, I say all of them are really... A lot of them were hard to record just because of the the emotions i mean I'm, i say i'm shaking at the end of my and it was because it was a it was almost a one take recording and i'm i'm like yo if i'm in the studio i don't want to do things just one take but you know when yeah artistically when you're in the studio and it's like okay i didn't actually mean for it to turn out like that but it just did. kind of flowed together just, in the right way yeah yeah it really just it just it just fit in with what i was doing and yeah it, it it's a special song to me it was my first single I, I can't say i like it as much now but yeah it, it definitely a, a brilliant place to start off i'd say <laughs> thank you it's pretty up there in terms of quality like oh, thank you, I, I think it's amazing Thank you. I just really can't wait to start being more active in, 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 you know, doing things like this and being a bit more of a voice and, you know, doing more music. And my album is coming this year without a doubt. And I can't mm-hmm. wait for the people that I hope it helps. I mean, just to even know that NYN somehow, you know, reached out to you means for mm-hmm. me that, okay, then. I got what I wanted. I accomplished that from MYN. I was able to help. Just no, you. You definitely have the, the. You definitely have the talent. You have everything that that I would, you know, say that. Thanks, you know, would make you a a great music artist. Like Thank you. I appreciate it. You've got the the individual voice. You know, you've you've got great pitch and emotion in in your words, and you, you know, with the lyrics and. Yeah, no, even go so far. Like, I, I don't understand why you haven't got into modeling yet because you are like the, you have the, 
you definitely have the um, aesthetic to <laughs> to get into those kind of spaces. Thank you, you should, man. You should think about doing that. <laughs> you know, I, I was actually thinking my room is really quite small. I want to build a studio out the back because really I want to do for my album. I don't just want to do, you know, a digital release. I want to do a physical release too. So there's a lot of like art that I want in there and that, you know, Back at day, I didn't, you know, I didn't used to feel comfortable in my image or how I looked or, or, you know, I used to think, yo, I'm not a good looking chap at all. And we st- we get comfortable and then we really start to, how to explain it, you know, fashion to me, like, I love my clothes. I love my clothes. Yeah. And that was because it's it's almost like something I'm fixated on. I just, I just love to mm-hmm. like, and when i i do that i always link it to like say my music and i'm happy for like to to get into like a room with photographers even though that have you you it's overwhelming i went out did you know that there's a video out to nyn and when i when that was it's on the jack mental health platform but it's it's not on youtube yet so it's only accessible there but when I'd done that, you know, cameras, the, it was so close to me and it, it was scary. But I think, you know, you're saying that because I'm going off topic just ever so slightly, is that we hone our craft and our art and our music together. And that helps to really, you know, like express a story, you know, and I want to be able to do that in a fit in, in a physical copy. So I have got some like some photos. and. Some... I think if, even... You know, going probably a bit further than that, I think you could probably get a lot of PR and sort of advocacy work out there from from doing, you know, trying to link up with some modeling agencies because I think you could you could really do well with that Thank kind of you. stuff. See, it's, it's, how great is this guy? How great is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> great. And just being honest, like I don't, Thanks, I don't, man. I don't take people's on for no reason, but. Yeah, I think you could you could definitely do that kind of thing. Thanks, man. Considering you know uh, that was uh, you, it's it's when you know growing up and we spoke earlier about you know not feeling comfortable in body image and when mm. you get to a point in your life where you're like you know okay there are still some really issues like you know earlier I said some days I wake up and I feel fat like and yeah, I, yeah. And, I, and I'm beating myself up in my head and I'm like but I'm not fat. I don't have I feel that. fat I today. I, I looked horrible. at myself in the mirror it's today so and it was horrible like horrible when you feel like that in it it's the worst thing when you feel like that and it's not true and i don't have that with my clothes Do you know i don't have that 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 thought when i'm you know it's when i can see that it's like you know so mm-hmm. clothing's become like a bit of a, a powerful powerful thing for me because that helps me to express myself too, just like me. It does, like, yeah, yeah man, yeah. yeah, that's how I feel about it. Just, just on a on a personal a personal question, like, I know that a lot of autistic people we can tend to struggle with like sharp pain, and just because I I'm I'm thinking of getting like another piercing at some point. How 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 much did the the nose piercings hurt? <laughs> Which one? One, two, or three? Oh, I've any got... of them. Just let me know. The, the, the sorry didn't hurt. I can't lie. The septum really hurt. But that's because yeah. where that like where they pierce that bit more is just quite small. So that's why mm-hmm. that hurt. But um, no, I've had in total about ten piercings. Wow. I've got my trigger. Yeah, I've already got one yeah. in my lobe, and that was like. That was just an absolute shock. Everyone was telling me it wasn't going to hurt. You know, and I when was, I was like, younger, okay, this is going to be too bad. Yeah, when I was younger, I didn't want tattoos. I didn't want I didn't want piercings other than my one ear. Me too. And now it's like <laughs> I have tattoos and I have piercings. And for me, it's like, you know, if I go for a traumatic experience, I get them and mm. they're my trophies. And it, it doesn't yeah. hurt. I feel like it's a, it's a, it's a trophy to me. And... I know that's a little bit weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I'm, I mean, I'm overdue with tattoo desperately. I've been waiting for my tattoo artist for a long time. I'm going to get some, uh, some like black demon wings across my back. Yeah. Because I got, I've only got one tattoo and I had it done in Thailand by a monk. It's like in 
imbued with some wow. kind of spiritual Monkey. energy or something wow. made like a ceremony that's wicked i got it i <laughs> that's wicked. i actually got it i got it um after because I, I was in thailand and my my granddad passed away when i was away and i, I didn't sort of manage to he was diagnosed with lung cancer and i didn't manage to get back to him back to home for for when he passed away which is which, which was hard for me so the way that i sort of dealt with that experience and sort of commemorated him was by getting this tattoo because it was kind of something that i was really scared about and it hurt us oh my god it hurt so much with this Did big it? steel needle and the hammer <gasps> that they use it's oh my god a steel hammer and needle yeah it was over my spine as well what? so it was like in the middle of my back all right well i promise you now you won't be getting that at any tattoo shop <laughs> you'll be getting that at any tattoo shop but no nah, piercings don't, don't, don't. some hurt more than others some hurt more than others the ear that that like the lobes they don't hurt yeah where your tragus and your helix that hurts but but it's it's pain that lasts for seconds and if you like a piercing once you've had it then you know uh, yeah, that's that's it you kind of like almost get addicted like i'm I'm done for the piercings now <laughs> so i, I hope for now <laughs> for now for a lot for, for, i don't know what else i could really get pierced that isn't you know i don't i think there's there's getting pierced and then there's getting pierced yeah. you know and people take take it to the extreme at times yeah and yeah, man, I, I have to deserve, like, you know, it's a reward if I go and get a tarot, like, they're, yeah, they're, yeah, paying, they're yeah. paying trophies, and I, I've just looked at them ever since like that, and it makes me feel good. Makes me feel yeah. good, man. Yeah, it's, if I don't have, if I have, if I have a day where there's no piercings in it, it doesn't feel, doesn't feel right, it feels horrible. What are going to get in, like, a, like, a nose, a nose ring, like, on the side, like, like you have, I think. Do it. If it's what you want, do it. I don't I don't know though. <laughs> Maybe they don't hurt. <laughs> I'll think about it. If they do it with a gun, it's not good. But if they do it with a needle, it's good. We'll see. I'll, I'll think about it a bit more, and I still need to get these these wings, which I'm really excited about because I've got some really bad like shoulder acne scars from when I was younger. I used to have really bad acne, and I still do to a certain extent. But these acne scars—they're real big, like insecurity of mine. So I really want to. Yeah. you want to get them lasered off or get a tattoo and i think I, I want a tattoo anyway so it's you know might be might be a good way for me to go but yeah just for 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 our listeners i guess where where can people find you like where would be the place that you'd want people to go to if people have even remotely liked the sound of my voice throughout this, this podcast or have even you know, talk to anything that I've said, then they can find me at mrkiranlee.org.uk or mr.kiranlee is all of my social handles. Mm -hmm, Same for mm -hmm. Spotify, it's Kieran Lee. Yeah, I, I definitely get, get you to check out the website. It looks amazing. And also the, definitely the music. Uh, you need to listen to, to Kieran's music. And as I said, it will be down in the description in the song of the day if you want to go check that out. And if you have enjoyed this episode of the 40 Audi podcast, make sure to give it a like, comment down below something. It could be anything. Uh, give an emoji a blue heart, something like that. Definitely really, really a helps me with the algorithm. And um, if you've liked this and you're listening on a podcasting streaming service like Spotify, uh, give it a rate, give it a like. Uh, that really helps me get pushed up the algorithm and gets these types of messages this type of content out to more people who who might really need it i'll also link this on my website as well so get me the url so i'll make sure that it goes on my website and my platforms too. oh thank you man i'll get you like the embed link or something if oh, you want. Wicked. yeah that'd be great man great <laughs> and if you want to check out my own uh my work my daily blogs um you can find those over on my instagram account at thomas henley uk i am on other social media platforms but instagram usually is the place to go tiktok youtube shorts if you if you want to check out the shorter 
sort of clips that I have from different podcasting episodes. They're, those are over on my YouTube channel as well. If you feel in like you really want to get the messages out of a podcast and you don't have time to listen to the entire thing, that would be the place to go. And yeah, I, I really hope you have enjoyed this episode. And uh, Kieran, and have you yeah. enjoyed your 40 yeah, odd experience? You, yeah, you know, this has been something that big. Really nervous, but really excited to do. It's been challenging. It's been emotional, but it's it's been it's been something that I remember for the rest of my life because you got you know like early we always start somewhere and I'm glad that whilst I'm starting my thing that I was able to do and be a part of something like this that you know can and I know will help so many. So. Yeah, it's powerful. So thanks for having me, man. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Kieran. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this episode and I will see you next week for another episode of the 40 Yorty podcast. See you later, guys. See ya.